Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. So today on the workbench, I have this Powermate 6250 generator. I believe it makes about 5,000 watts under normal conditions. You can kind of see some of the stats over here. Um, it's got a 10 horsepower Tecumseh engine. Well, on the other side, this is the generator. 5,000 running watts and one year limited warranty which we are way outside of right now because this thing is pretty old and it's been sitting for several years a friend of mine knows that I like to tinker with small engines and he uh, already bought a replacement for this and asked me if I wanted this one so of course I said yes so what I'll do is I'll get everything set up I'll put this camera on a tripod and we'll just kind of start going through the steps that I take when I'm trying to get an engine to start for the first time. So those of you that follow my channel know that I'm in the middle of a never-ending Beetle rebuild. It's kind of on hold right now, um, but my garage has been overtaken by it. I'm, it looks like this Beetle has exploded and basically left all of its parts all over the garage. But in the meantime, this project came up and it's a special project and uh, I'll get more into why, what makes it special a little bit later on in the video. But right now, let's get started. Up. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to check the air filter and then to make sure it's not destroyed or missing or whatever, check for spark and then if those two things are good, I'll go ahead and maybe uh, try to test fire it real quick and uh, we'll go from that point. Considering this is just a generator that somebody used as a backup when there were power outages tells me that it hasn't been used very much. Visual inspection, it's just a little dirty but it's definitely not, doesn't look like it's been used very much hardly at all. If I had to guess, it probably doesn't run just because the carburetor is dirty due to sitting. But I'm gonna go ahead and do some due diligence and make sure everything else looks good as well. The inside of the air filter housing has got a little bit of surface rust and that's probably just from condensation. The filter itself looks pretty much brand new. Once again we get a little bit of just the lightest touch of surface rust on here and that's probably from being stored out in a garage or something. Nothing to be concerned about. Choke is free, throttle is free, so next I'm going to focus on this spark plug right here that you can't see. So now I'm going to focus on this spark plug right here. Well, the best socket I could find is this 21 millimeter. I know it's not the right size, but I don't think it's going to hurt anything. Heat shield's in the way, but I think I got it. So, it doesn't look too bad, it really doesn't. I mean, it's not overly fouled. It's not white and burnt up, so we're gonna run with it as long as uh, we got a good spark here. I'm gonna take a look right now. It might be too bright for you to see. I guess I'll hold it right here. Here we go. Well, I doubt you can see it, 
but I can see it. There is a spark. I can hear it too. So that's good. Nice and it's consistent. So that's good. Alright. So I think what I'm going to do this may be a little controversial. I'm going to give let me uh, zoom out here. I'm going to give the uh, air intake just a little, just a little sniff of uh, starting fluid. Just, just a little sniff and pull it and see if she fires over. There's no, I don't think there's any reason why she wouldn't. So, literally, there's just that much. Well, it looks like we have ourselves a runner here. This one might just might be easy. One thing I want to do before I get too deep into getting this thing to run is I do want to check the oil. Um, well, that popped right open, so let's take a look and see. They look pretty good. Let me let me clean it off. Here we go. Get a better look of this at this here. So. Alright, in, out, so, oh, it'll get there. So she's right on the full line, and it looks fresh, it's not black, so I'm okay with that. You know, I'm half tempted to just dump some fuel in it and see what it'll do. But what I think I'm going to do is this right here that you're looking at is kind of a, you know, it's a shield for the carburetor. I'll pull the shield off. I want to drop the carburetor bowl and just see if it's dirty, if it has anything in it. So that's what I'm going to do next. Some nasty looking stuff on the underside of the bowl there. I'm gonna get the right size wrench on that guy. Got something coming out. Maybe I'll try to catch it. I'm pretty sure there wasn't any fuel in the And it burns a little bit. Okay. So not a lot of whatever's in here. Ooh. Ooh, it smells it smells uh pretty old. I'm afraid of ruining this uh, gasket. But it might already be ruined. <laughs> uh, what do you guys think? Oh, what do you think? I think maybe that had something to do with it not starting. What in the world? I don't even know what that is. I think it's just like gelled gasoline. Oh. It's so strange. It looks like caviar. Well, I'm going to definitely clean the bowl out. 
I'm going to have to inspect the whole carburetor as well. I didn't want to have to take it off, but I might. Alright, I think I'm going to try to take the lazy way out first and just hit it with brake cleaner and then blow some air through it. Hopefully, that'll get me closer to where I want to be. The petcock on this tank was open, so I'm hoping that that was all of the fuel that was left in the system. I guess I get to use the little, the little straw that comes with this. Alright, I'm going to have to pull the carburetor off because the needle is not sliding. It's not moving up against the seat. This is just the free play that's in the float right here. So, this job got a little bit more complicated, and the surface of my workbench does not like carb cleaner. I'm just finding out now. Okay, apparently I was wearing the wrong type of gloves too, because they started to dissolve with the carb cleaner. Probably should have known better, but it's okay. I'm going to just get this air cleaner plate off of here first, just to make the carburetor a little bit easier to handle. Get this breather hose off of here. Oh, okay, we got Phillips screws back here, nice. Excuse my arm. Here, that's better. This goes there. This goes here. Alright, get the fuel line hose off. These fuel line pliers are the best for getting a good grip on the line without crushing it over the barb. Plastic hose barb is never good either. Alright, a little bit of fuel come out. Alright, here is our carburetor. So yeah, that needle is stuck in there, it's not moving at all. Sorry. Try to get you guys in focus here. Really don't want to mess with this gasket too much. But it's in the way. I can't get the pivot pin for the float out with it in the way. I like uh, on these Tecumseh motors, their gaskets that they use on the float bowls are really thick and they're not prone to tear like the Briggs and Stratton ones. The Briggs and Stratton ones have usually have the gasket like embedded in the housing of the carburetor and they kind of just want to tear. You probably can't see the main jet but it is completely clogged and I'm not too familiar with the way that the emulsion tubes in here work or if there even is an emulsion tube there's something in there with a little o-ring I'll have to figure out it's like a pla piece of plastic I can see it in here anyway I'll figure that out later right now I gotta work on getting this this pin out right here I got it started over on the advice here but I think it's gonna go 
really rusty. Trying not to damage it. There we go. There we go. That was a little concerning. All right. So now, see if we can get the spring off. There. Don't want to lose that. So now the problem is, I've got. I need needle nose pliers. Alright, if this doesn't work, I might just throw caution to the wind and and just drop it in my my carb cleaner can. Let it soak for a while. Oh, Alright, it came right out. It is just varnished, completely varnished up, and the seat is not looking, it's not looking too great either. Let me, um, let me try to get this, uh, whatever this is, this, I'm, you know, I call it the emulsion tube, because that's what it is like on a Honda, but I'm not sure what's going on in there. It's some piece of plastic. It looks like it's supposed to be some type of an emulsion emulsion tube um, I'm assuming it pushes out from inside here if I can reach it the only reason I want to get it is it's got a tiny little o-ring in there and my carb cleaner will ruin it if I put it in there. So I'll have to figure out how to pop that out. Alright, uh, I was mangling it so I decided to leave it in there. We'll see um, what happens. So I'm gonna just let it soak in here for a little while. I rinsed out the uh, bowl and uh, it looks like it's got a little rust in the bottom, but that could just be some stuck-on gunk as well. Uh, what else needs to go in there? The needle definitely needs to go in there. And the f the the um, the main jet. And try to get this gasket off without tearing it. All right, we'll let that soak for a while and then come back and see how it did. Well, I ended up soaking it overnight. I didn't necessarily want to because of those seals, but I guess we'll see how it turned out. A lot of that's, a lot of this is just like corrosion. Looking pretty good. And I think that's rust actually, so looks like there might have been a little bit of a little bit of water that it had accumulated in here. Rusted the bottom of this guy, this bowl out. I don't know, I'm gonna probably hit some of this stuff with a, with a, like a brass brush or something. Now that it's been soaked, it'll be good, and then I make sure that this jet is cleaned out all the way because it was pretty nasty and also um, I'll have to check out this the seat in here <clears throat> the seat inside here it cleaned up really good so I'm gonna probably get a q-tip in there and just make sure that there's nothing else solid 
left behind, and then I'll blow this out, rinse it out, and call it good. Alright, I'm going to try to put this cardboard together here, and you're going to watch me struggle. The thing about these Tecumseh ones is they use these little springs to hold the needle in, and uh, I think it might get a little finicky, so we're going to find out here. Take my needle. You probably can't even see it because it's so small, but pop the spring on. That. And I believe it just kind of hovers over that. Gently drop it in there. I think I'm all good there so far. There we go. Not too bad. I am going to have to push the pin in the rest of the way. It was a little corroded. There we go. Let's see, can you see in there? There we go. So you can see the needle moving inside there now with the float. It's right inside behind here. So now I guess I can test it with it upside down. I'll blow on this and it should not let any air through. Okay, no air. So I'll flip it this way now and it should let air through. Okay, so it works. I'll get my really crusty o-ring back on here. Hopefully it'll seal. I think I want that like that. Give the float ball some clearance. Put this Ceiling washer back onto the jet. There we go. All in all, not too shabby. I guess time will tell if this rebuild was successful. Okay, well, I will go ahead and get this installed back on the the engine over here and we'll uh, test her out. <clears throat> okay, so we were like this. Bolt through. I, you know, I actually like bolt through because then you don't have to worry about stripping out threads on a breather tube or anything like that. Before I forget, I need to attach the throttle linkage. So anyway, like I was saying, I like bolt through. Because a lot of times, especially on really old engines, if you stripped out those threads, you're going to be bolting through anyway. So. Darn hose clamps. Oh. 
breather hose. All right. So <clears throat> good enough to test. Dang it! You know what I should have done. And I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm closing the pet cock. I'm gonna pull the fuel line off again, and I'm gonna run some fuel through this tank just to make sure there isn't any built-up gunk inside the hose or any other surprises like that. Okay, I've got the pet cock turned off. I got the fuel line running into a cup. Put a little bit of fuel in here. Ooh, I can smell the displaced air inside this tank came out smelling really bad. But I don't think there was anything in there. And I didn't pick the cleanest cup to pour this gas into, but I'm going to open up the pet cock, see what comes out. There we go. Just a little bit of black stuff came out of the hose. But I think we're good now. The fuel came out pretty clean. If I was really concerned about it, I could put a fuel filter on here, but I think we'll be okay. Okay, I'm gonna open the fuel back up. I hear the bowl filling. I guess we'll see how many pulls it takes to fire this guy up. I've got it on full choke. Now I got it on full choke. Here we go. Well, as you can see, looks like it's going to run. Took me a second there. <laughs> when I started it up, I forgot I had the full choke on, and so I was like, why is, it, why is it struggling? And then, once I took it off. All right, so I do have a little bit of leakage. Try to figure out where it's coming from. Alright, so it's not coming from around the bowl, it's coming from that guy right there. Uh, it should be easy enough to fix with another O-ring. Um, so that's the least of my worries. Next thing I gotta do is I'm gonna clean this thing up and make it look about as new as I possibly can. So I doubt you want to watch me clean this thing, which is totally fine. So when I'm done washing it, I'll bring it back and then we'll have a little discussion on what I plan on doing with this. Well, I have to say this guy cleaned up really nice. I honestly don't think it had very many hours on it at all. It's just the nature of the beast. These generators don't get used that often. And, um, you know, they spend so much downtime in between use that you can tell, you could see with my experience here, the carburetor gets all gunked up and then they quit working and so then they just don't get used at all. So this guy cleaned up really good, almost looks brand new, pretty satisfied with that. One last thing I haven't tested yet is I actually haven't tested the generator. So I, we know the motor works. I've got a couple of lights here, some floodlights, I'll fire up the generator and plug them in see how it performs under load. I guess it would help if I turned it on.
So it surged until it warmed up. I don't know if that's normal. I do have a leak in the bowl, so I'm going to have to uh, get into the carburetor again and just make sure that seals back up. But once I do that, I'm done. So looks pretty good. Well, I tried to track down the surging and just kept getting worse, and so I decided to tear apart the carburetor again. Took a real hard look at the seals inside the, uh, I guess you could call it the emulsion tube. Things were looking pretty bad. So I went ahead and did the right thing, and I bought the uh, Tecumseh rebuild kit here. It comes with a bunch of parts that I'm not using. Lots of screws and Welsh plugs and, and these little guys that help seal up the, the choke and the, and the throttle. Um, I, I just needed these little round seals and, and the main jet seal and the, the bowl seal and the seat and the needle. Anyway, I rebuilt the whole thing. And before I even got a chance to start it up, it was leaking like crazy. And I had originally thought it was the, the jet, the seal that goes on the jet, you know, the little washer. But finally, I figured it out. I don't know if I pointed that out before, but you know, there's a little bit of corrosion in the bottom of the bowl here. Well, I mean, this bowl isn't much thicker than a, than a soda can. And whatever was in here previously corroded, and there's actually a pinhole in the bottom of the bowl here. So... I'm running out of time, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to JB Weld the bottom of the bowl here and uh, hope that that holds, and then I will see if I can't source a spare bowl somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Alright, well, we'll find out if this is any good. Oh, let's see if I can get it in there. Just want a thin coat that won't interfere with the float ball or with the pickup tube or anything else. And then I'm going to hit it on the outside too. A little belt and suspenders action going on here. Alright, well I guess we'll see how well that hardens up. Okay, so after I filmed that last part I found another spot where the pitting had gone all the way through. I guess it's the ethanol in the gas that does this. You can see the pits on the edge there. I'm pretty surprised, but I, I kind of looked it up a little bit and it does say that the ethanol can do this type of pitting over time. So I'm going to get everything buttoned back up. We're going to try this one last time before I wrap up this video. Okay, I got her all buttoned up um, enough to run it. No fuel leaks out from under the bowl for a change. That's like a first since I've started working on this. I'm going to go ahead and give her a shot. So it looks like it's going to run good. Um, just a couple of tiny adjustments with the air fuel mixture and I think I'll have this thing dialed right in. So the title of this video calls it a special project and I'm releasing this video the day before Father's Day and the reason I'm doing that is because I'm actually going to be giving this generator to my dad for Father's Day. And so dad I know you watch so once you see this video, just give me a call and I'll bring it on over for you. I want to take the opportunity also to thank my friend Rex for actually giving me this generator. He had already replaced it with a fuel injected generator. He didn't want this one anymore. I offered to pay him for it and he refused. And so I figured might as well pay it forward and uh, my dad's been looking for a generator anyway for a little bit of backup at his house and so this is a great opportunity 
to give him something that he wants for Father's Day. Thank you everybody for watching up to this point. Feel free to comment down below anything you'd like. I read all the comments. And go ahead and like and subscribe to this channel if you like this type of content because I do a lot of repairs, I do a lot of will it runs, I do a lot of woodworking, and a lot of 3D printing stuff. So once again, my name is Tom. This is South Paul Workshop. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. That's it, a quarter turnout is all needed.